Zakah on minerals and treasures. Allah, glory be to him, created minerals in the ground, such as gold, silver, iron, jewels, lead, and others. Likewise, it is possible for a person to find property which someone has buried under the earth's surface, which is referred to as treasures. Such could be silver, or gold coins, or some form of valuable treasure. Allah made a special form of zakah compulsory on these, as He, the Exalted, says, O you who believe, spend of the good things you have legally earned, and of that which we have produced from the earth for you. And the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, also said, Of treasures, one-fifth is payable. Whenever a man comes in the possession of treasure, he pays the zakah immediately. He should pay one-fifth of it, due to the Prophet's statement, peace and blessings be upon him, of treasures one-fifth is payable. Zakah on the two currencies. What is meant by the two currencies is gold and silver, and whatever can be used in their place, such as paper currency that is in circulation today. The scholar stated that zakah on the two currencies is obligatory, due to Allah saying, and those who hoard up gold and silver and spend them not in the way of Allah announce unto them a painful torment. And the saying of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, the owner of gold or silver, who does not pay the poor their dues, that is zakah, will have a bitter punishment on the day of resurrection. Plates of fire will be beaten out for them. These will then be heated in the fire of hell, and his sides, forehead, and back will be ironed with them. Whenever these cool down, the process will be repeated throughout a day whose extent will be 50,000 years until judgment is pronounced among the servants and he sees whether his path is to take him to heaven or hell. The scholars have agreed that zakah on gold and silver is obligatory. They have also stated that paper currency takes the same ruling as gold and silver, as it has taken their place in financial transactions. There are conditions for zakah to be obligatory on the two currencies. The one who owns the currencies has to have complete ownership of it. A complete lunar year must have lapsed with the currency in the person's possession, and it is also obligatory that it has reached the nisab. The scholars calculated that the nisab for gold is 20 dinars, that is 85 grams, and a gold dinar equals 4 and a quarter grams. As for silver, its nisab is 200 dirhams, that is 595 grams, as a silver dirham is equivalent to 2.975 grams. As for the nisab of paper currency, it is calculated based on the basis of the nisab of gold or silver when the collection of zakah is due. No matter whether the nisab is based on gold or silver, the zakah which should be paid is one-fourth of a tenth or 2.5%. Concerning this, the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said, when you possess 200 dirhams and a year passes by, you are to pay five dirham as zakah. There is nothing for you to pay of gold until it is 20 dinars. When you possess 20 dinars and a year passes by, you are to pay half of a dinar. Any increment is to be calculated accordingly. If a person owns gold or silver, but each one does not reach the nisab, the most correct opinion is that no zakah should be paid on it. He should pay zakah on the gold by itself, and also pay zakah on the silver by itself, but not join the two currencies together so as to make up the nisab. This is due to the saying of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, no zakah is due on property mounting to less than five, that is, of silver, and he who puts together gold and silver has enjoined zakah on less than five silver uqiyas. The scholars have agreed that an uqiyah equals 40 dirham. Zakah on ornaments. 
For ornaments of gold or silver, there are two categories. The first one for which the zakah is obligatory are those ornaments which are intended for storage and safekeeping, or the ones considered for business. On the other hand, concerning the ornaments intended for use, many scholars do not see zakah on them as being compulsory, because such an ornament is not a property kept to increase wealth but a personal belonging to be used and benefited from, like clothing and furniture. It is part of the need of a lady for her beautification, and the basic rule is that the wealth should actually increase or have a tendency to increase before zakah is payable on it. The safest course of action, however, is to pay zakah on such ornaments because this is the safest opinion, as it frees the conscience from guilt. A woman once came to the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him in the company of her daughter and on the daughter's hands were two heavy masakats made of gold. The Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said to her, do you pay the zakah on these? She replied, no. He said, will you be pleased if Allah makes for you from them bracelets of fire on the day of resurrection? She removed them and threw them towards the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him, saying, They are for Allah and his Messenger. But if the ornament is not made of gold or silver, as for example, when it is made from diamonds, ruby, pearls, etc., zakah is not obligatory on them, no matter how valuable they are, except for the ones considered for trade. And these are to be treated as goods displayed for sale, that is, merchandise.